By creating spokespersons for products, marketers maintain total control. Not only that, but creative spokespersons can be product specific, whereas a celebrity spokesperson can shill for numerous products. However, it does take time and money to cultivate the creative spokesperson's personality. The Jolly Green Giant is the creative spokesperson for Green Giant products. This is the way the Jolly Green Giant first appeared. He is much more friendly looking today. Yes, it's the Mickey Rooney Show, brought to you by the Jolly Green Giant, your best friend in peas and corn. Oh, hi, here's the Jolly Green Giant, you see on a label with golden corn, and tell the Jolly Green Giant will set up your table with golden corn, and tell the peas the Jolly Green Giant is here. This is the Jolly Green Giant's son. His name is Little Sprout. Come on, Sprout. It's picking time. I'm going to pick Fettuccine Primavera. Huh? Pick any Green Giant Garden Gourmet. They make a delicious light entree. Can this be the same old valley? Oh, oh, oh. Green Giant. Mr. Beetle is the Michelin Tire character. The Ronald McDonald Clown is the McDonald spokesperson. The Snap Crackle Pop character serve as spokespersons for Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Their names are translated for different languages. The Pillsbury Doughboy and his giggle serves his products well. Mr. Clean is the creative spokesperson for Procter & Gamble products. The Energizer Bunny and the Duracell Bunny look quite alike, and there's an interesting story behind their similarity. The Duracell Bunny was first on the advertising scene, but then, over 15 years ago, Duracell failed to renew its trademark in the United States. This allowed Energizer to swoop in and trademark its own pink, alkaline-powered drumming bunny. This was done in an effort to mock the Duracell campaign and claim the product's superiority. That's why today, North American television viewers are accustomed to seeing their bunnies running on Energizer, whereas it's Duracell for the rest of the world. The problem is that many people believe that the pink bunny is for Duracell. For years, you've seen some commercials where one battery company's toys outlast the other toys. So you may have assumed their battery outlasts even Energizer batteries. Fact is, Energizer was never invited to their playoffs. And today's Energizer won't be invited either. Why? Because no battery lasts longer than Energizer. So now you know. A word to the wise. Energize. Nipper the dog has served loyally as a spokesperson for RCA. The Sun Made Girls makeover has sparked controversy. A sizable faction has voiced dislike for the new computer animated version of the Sun Made Girl and preferred the classic design that harkened back to a time when life was much simpler, more rural, and a lot less hectic. The new Brawny Man is supposed to be a kinder, gentler version of the original. His introduction has been quietly received. The California Raisins served as spokespersons for the California Raisin Board in the 1980s and led to a surge of popularity for California Raisin toy figures. California Raisins from the California Vineyards. Don't you know that I hide it through the grapevine? Sounds better than what I got. Spokespersons can be real people who are not celebrities, but just normal, everyday people. Timex ran an interesting campaign that featured real people who, like its tagline, took a licking and kept on ticking. First, we'll see an old Timex TV commercial from the 1970s that feature the Timex tagline, took a licking and kept on ticking. Next, we will see the magazine ads that appeared years later. They feature real people who took a licking and kept on ticking.
Timex, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Louisa Murray was eating a sandwich when a bowling ball fell off a ledge three stories above her and hit her in the head. Doctors gave her a one in a million chance, but she fought back and last spring graduated from college. The ball did leave a little dent in her head. In the ad, Louisa is wearing a Timex women's fashion watch. John Scott was in a 480-foot mine elevator in England when safety engineers began testing its emergency braking system. The engineers repeatedly raised the elevator to the surface and sent it into a free fall before realizing John and a fellow miner were inside. They survived the two-hour ordeal with some very sore backs. John is wearing the B-29 watch. Willie Durberry, age 121, was born five years after the end of the Civil War. His closest brush with death was a while ago, in the trenches in World War II. He credits quitting smoking and drinking with adding a few years to his life. Then again, his sister lived to 115. Willie is wearing the Easy Reader watch. It's easier to see the numbers. This is Jared, a former spokesperson for Subway Sandwiches who lost enough weight eating a diet of Subway sandwiches to reduce himself by half. The reason he decided to eat Subway sandwiches was happenstance. At the time, he was a college student and happened to live near a Subway sandwich eatery. With the rise of the internet, the increasing bandwidth, and the speed of production, marketers can now involve consumers to interact with the ads. Burger King invited consumers to get chicken just the way you like it by visiting its subservient chicken website and typing in commands for the chicken to perform. Ah, the chicken. Yeah, we're the people who built subservient chicken. But how did the most famous bird in the history of the internet come into being? Well, in 2004, Burger King and Crispin Porter asked us to help them launch the tender crisp chicken sandwich. The positioning was chicken the way you like it. TV spots that nobody remembers today introduced the character of a guy in a chicken suit getting bossed around. We did the logical thing. We let people boss him for real. The site itself was incredibly simple. Type in what you want the chicken to do, and he does it. Want him to hula hoop? Make a sandwich? Do the hokey pokey? Just type it in. Ask him to do something naughty and you'll get a piece of his mind. We built the site, shot and edited the video, and created an enormous database made up of thousands of commands. It took off like nothing else before or since. It received over 1 billion hits, making it probably the most successful marketing website ever. It won every award imaginable, including multiple canned lions. And it sold chicken sandwiches, driving double-digit growth for the Tender Crisp. But beyond that, the chicken practically invented a whole new kind of marketing. It used to be called viral, but really it's just the idea that brands can connect with people without spending money on media, by creating something so engaging that people just have to share it. We had known since the dawn of the web that it was possible, but it took putting a guy in a chicken suit to prove it to the world. The Old Spice, the Man Your Man Could Smell Like campaign, invited consumers to write in questions and comments via social media such as Twitter and Facebook. The spokesperson then responded with videos. Here he is responding to Kay Manchester who sent him a tweet. Kay Manchester tweeted. If the Old Spice guy does a video response for me, I promise to name my firstborn child Old Spice Manchester. Thanks for the tweet, K. Manchester. Please save this video, as the following is a message for little Old Spice Manchester when the time is right. Hello, young Old Spice. Although currently you are a boy or girl person, you will soon grow into a suave-filled, strong man filled with grit and determination toward living success achievement life. And as you mature over the course of many Earth rotations and make your way towards your predestined championship pinnacle existence, never forget your namesake. Because Old Spice is not just a product family to rub against your skin areas. It's a state of being and a way of life filled with handsome likability, successful dance moves, immense money game, and triumph. So go out there and win constantly, young Old Spice. You can't not, which means you always will. 